Hi, welcome to this Excel training session on how to bring your accounts information into one sheet. That's right, we're gonna look at summarizing data, particularly accounts data, and bring it all together so you can summarize it, so you can analyze how much money you've made, your receipts, your expenses, your profits, and also how to break down the categories. To get a better understanding of what we're going to do, have a look at the sheet that we've got here. So as you can see, uh, we've got April and we're going through to March and we're going to have a summary sheet here. And on the summary sheet, we'll work out how much the received is, the expenses, and we'll work out the profits. Okay, so we'll know that. We'll then break down different categories of payments so we can then know if you've spent too much on consumables or sustenance and looking to reduce that for the next year. Of course, we're trying to always increase our client payments. And also to see how much we make per month, to know if there's a quiet month, maybe we could concentrate on advertising or do something different to gain more business. Now, this tutorial, this Excel uh, accounts tutorial, bringing accounts into one sheet, it's going to be the first in a series of tutorials. So this one's for you beginners out there. So if you are struggling and how to uh, summarize data across multiple sheets or bring all your accounts data across multiple sheets together, then this is the one for you. So let's get started. Now, what I want you to do is firstly, uh, download the exercise file uh, that accompanies this. And it should look something like this. Now, I'll give you a link above and there's an, also a link down below where you can click and go to a website where you can download that data. On that website, you will also find step-by-step -step instructions. So if you prefer that, then click on the link below, go there and have a look at the step-by-step -step instructions. Great. So now you've downloaded and you've opened your copy of Excel. First thing we're gonna do is go to the summary sheet. So if we click on this summary sheet at the bottom, and then I'm going to go and click in cell A1. Now, it, I want to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard and then use the wheel on my mouse. And you see, as I'm rolling in with my control key held down, it just makes the spreadsheet a little bigger, easier to work with. So I'm going to type in just a few headings here, which I'm going to make, um, you know, going to make a little bit prettier later on. So the first heading is going to be total. And I'll press enter, and then I'm gonna say receipts. And then press tab. And I wanna put my um, answer in B3. Now, what I can do to quickly add all of that up is use the auto sum. So I'm gonna go up here and click on auto sum. And you can see it's got auto sum here. And then I'm gonna click on the April tab at the bottom. I'm gonna hold down the shift key and then click on March. So you can see up in the formula bar, it says equal sum April to March. And now I'm going to click on the header for the received. So not actually the text received, but actually on column I. And if you look closely on the formula bar, it says April to March, which we've just selected, II. When we finish that, we can press enter on the keyboard, or you can click on this green tick. And here we can see the total amount of receipts that we've received. So let's format that as pounds and pence by clicking on the accounting button just up here. And we can see more details here. We've made 108,836 pounds and 61 pence. So let's do the same for the expenses to work out how much we spent. So I'm gonna click underneath receipts and type in expenses. Press tab on the keyboard to move across. Again, I'm going to go up to and click on auto sum and I click on April, I hold down the shift key and click on Ma for March, and then I click on column H for the expenses. And this time I'm just gonna press enter on the keyboard and now I can see that's how much expenses that I've incurred throughout this year. So click on that cell and I'm gonna format that as pounds and pence and looking rather good. So the last thing we just need to do is work out the profit. Now the advantage is, is because the expenses is a negative number, I can click under expenses here, type in profit as my heading and press tab. 
And then all I need to do is sum these two here. Now I'm going to let you into a little secret here. There's a shortcut to auto sum. Oh yes, there is. If you take your keyboard and hold down the Alt key and equals, so it's Alt and equals. It's the Alt key. It's just to the left of the space bar and the equals key. You can see it says equals sum and it automatically has found those figures. I press enter and I can see that this year I've made a profit or I beg your pardon, a profit. Let me just double click and click between the F and the T and type in an I and press enter. That's better. I've made a profit of £95,914.96. So it's looking rather good. So how do I break down those receipts and those expenses into different categories? Well, if you look on each month, you can see I have a category column here and I can see that each client, each expense and receipt is broken down. So I've got a client payment, which obviously is a receipt, and I've got consumables here, which of course is an expense. So what I want is to get a unique list of all of these values. Uh, the answer to this depends on the version of Excel that you are currently using. Now, if you're using Excel 365, you can take advantage of the unique function. If not, then you're going to have to use the remove duplicates method. So let me show you both let methods. So let's say, for instance, you're using, you're not using Excel 365. What are you going to do? So what you can do here is you can select uh, F1 up here at the top where it says category. Hold down the control, shift and the down arrow. And you see it selects all of the categories in the entire column. It just saves us having to scroll down. I'm going to copy it by holding down control and C on the uh, keyboard. Use my wheel to scroll up to the top again. And I'm gonna click in cell N1, and then paste by holding down Control and V. So there pastes all of the categories, an exact copy of this category column. But what I wanna do now is to remove the duplicates. So the way I do that is by going up and clicking on Data from the tab at the top on the ribbon and go across and look for remove duplicates. Now, if your screen size isn't as large as mine, then your icons might look a little different. The layout might be a little different. So just make sure you find that little icon there that represents remove duplicates and give it a click. So this box here will find all of the duplicates in this list. Notice it has my data has headers is ticked because it's not going to include the category header in that list. And then we can click on OK. So you can see it's found 162 duplicate values and removed seven. So I can click on OK. And now I've got a unique list of values there. Now, I did say that um, there is another way of finding unique values if you're using Excel 365, and that is using the unique function. In fact, you might as well just have a look. If you're not sure which version of Excel you're using, just have a look and see if you've got the unique function. So I'm going to do this again by using the unique function. So let me just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of what I've just done. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to click up in N1 here, like so, and I'm going to type in equals unique. OK, and you can see as I type in unique, it comes up here. There I can see unique. When I see it selected, I can press the tab key on the keyboard. So you can see it comes up with unique here. I can use the mouse then to click on the F1, hold down the control, shift and the down arrow down to F170, close bracket and press enter on the keyboard. And you can see that I have unique values here. So that's one of two ways that you can use to create the unique values. Now we need to create these new unique values because we're going to use a function within Excel called sum if. Now you're already familiar with the auto sum function. In fact, we used it previously in the summary sheet to sum the receipts. But what we're going to do this time is going to sum um, a value if only if the value is equal to the uh, criteria, what's known as the criteria in the cell to the left of it. So what I want it to do 
is I want this auto sum to only sum if the row in the category column contains client payment. So what would happen here is client payments will be summed here and then it finds another client payments. These ones here will all be summed and these ones here. So it will miss out all of the others. And most importantly, with the consumables as well. So for instance, weed killer is a consumable. So it'll use that one there and it will go and it will miss um, another one there. And there's another consumable there. So let's go on and do that, shall we? So I just go back. So I'm just going to here click in cell 01 and type in total and then put a little pound sign because I'm dealing in sterling. I then press enter and now I'm just going to hold down the control key and use my mouse to zoom in a tiny little bit so you can see. So the formula will go like this equals sum if and you can see it comes up sum if on the uh, helper text there. I'm going to press tab on the keyboard. Now, the way that this works is I want to check this range here. So I click on the F at the top and then I type in a comma to enter my next set of instructions. And if you note, it actually says sum if range. And now after I've typed the comma, it's asking for what's known as the criteria. So in the criteria argument, I will click on client payment. So in effect, it's going to look down the F column in category and check to see if any of those e equal to client payment, which we can see in cell N2. I then type in another comma. And now I need to decide the sum range. Now, the sum range will contain numbers that need to be added. So what I'm going to do for this one here is I'm going to go over and click on the I column here at the top and then close off the bracket like so. OK, so now what I need to do is to write another sum if to take care of the expenses. And I'm going to do this up here in the formula bar. So let me click there and type in the formula for the expenses. So again, and sum if and the helper text has helped me find the formula. So I press tab on the keyboard. Again, the range is going to be category. So I click on the F column. Notice it says F colon F. Type in a comma and then choose client payment in cell N2 as the criteria. Type in a comma. And then finally, I'm going to select column H as the expenses and close off the bracket. I then press enter on the keyboard and I can see how much I've made in April for client payment. So I'm going to change this to pounds and pence. A nice shortcut for that is holding using a keyboard shortcut. Just hold down control and shift and then press the, uh, the dollar sign to create that as pounds and pence, control shift and the dollar sign. And now armed with that, I can go down to this little black dot in the bottom right hand corner. Please make sure that you see the black cross double click and you can see then that the formula has auto filled down seeing our accounts information broken down by category looking good okay now what i want to do with this here now notice this one here is with this unique function is i want to paste the values of this and in that way no matter if you've got office 365 and you've done it um, with the unique function or you're using an older version of Office and you had to remove the duplicates, then the rest of this tutorial will work for both of you. So the way I'm going to do this is highlight N1 and go all the way down to equipment. Copy by holding down control and pressing C on the keyboard. And then I'm going to right click anywhere in the middle and then go to paste values, which you can see with this little paste option with the one, two, three next to it. So when I click on that, note that the unique function has disappeared, being replaced by the actual values it returns. I now press escape on the keyboard and I'm ready to proceed to the next step. So what I need to do is I need to copy these um, summary results that's currently on the sheet of April across 
to May, June, July, all the way through to March of the next financial year. Now, I could do it one at a time, but that's going to be rather long and tedious. And yes, you are right, there is a quicker way. So what we're going to do first is copy this here. So make sure you select N1 down to 09, uh, sorry, 08 here. And then I'm going to go Control C on the keyboard to copy. Then what I'm going to do is click in May at, on the tab, on the, uh, the May tab in this spreadsheet. I hold down the Shift key on the keyboard and click on Ma. Now this is a nice little trick here because whatever I do on any of these sheets here in May will also happen simultaneously in June, July. So whatever I do here will automatically be copied across all of those spreadsheets. So what do I want to do? Well, let me just scroll up to the top and I'll click in cell N1 just at the top and Control V to paste. And it's copied not just the values across, but it's also copied the formulas. So now when I go to the different months, let me just scroll up each one of them, you can see that the values have changed. Let me just highlight these here and make it wider. Now I can see that's great. If I zoom in a tad here, there we go. Just done, yeah. So you can see here, so this is July, that's 7695. If I go to August, scroll up, you can see, well, that's 7695. Let me just go to the next one. Ah, and there we go. That's 9352. I'm going to go to the next one here, 938. So you can see it's copied across. As you can see, the sheets are all still selected in white. So what I'm going to do is click on the summary sheet just at the end here. So um, uh, it's deselected all of the sheets. So the last thing I need to do is copy um, these categories across to the summary sheet and run a sum function across a lot of them. That's what we're just going to do right now. So if we highlight this category just here, and I tell you what I'm also going to do is hold down the control key and click on total here at the top. And then going to click on the summary sheet. I'm going to click on cell A7 and control V to paste. Okay. Now it's come up reference here because the formulas are wrong, but what I will do is I will just clear those formulas by highlighting them and pressing delete on the keyboard. I'm just going to go up between the dividing line between A and B and double click to make that column wide enough to cater for all of the categories here. And now I need to add up the client payment. So I click in B8 and I type in my function sum. Let's use the shortcut key, shall we? Alt and equals for sum. Now using the mouse, I'm going to click on April, hold the shift key down and click on March. And then I'm going to click on client payment here at the top and then finish by pressing enter. And I can see I've got that figure there. If I hold down control and use the mouse to scroll back to zoom back a bit, that's a little bit more. You can see that these figures here, they match up. It's working. So what I just need to do now is just copy this down. So I'm going to go here and double click so that auto fills down so I can see totally how much I've made in consumables, sustenance, clothing, that type of thing. Great, so almost there. Now, if I look at the other spreadsheet again, if I go back and have a quick look, I've just got this little profit thing that I want to work out. So the profit that I made each month. So let's go back and do that. Um, so if I pop in, I pop it in this cell here and I'm going to type in April. And then what I can do with API is click on it, go to the autofill. This time I'll have to click and hold the mouse button down and drag down until it gets to March this next year. That's good. I uh, just want to see if I've matched up this year. So that's OK. I think profit lines up. I've got month there and then April in A5. So let me just move that down one. So I'm going to go here or two. So go to the border. You see, I've gone to the border here um, where I see a four pointed arrow. Click and just drag down a couple. That goes down to uh, sorry, A5, D5 there. I can click at the top and type some headings in month profit. And I'll put a little pound sign to know what I'm talking about just there. So I click on just here. And now what I want to do is just work out the profit for April. So alt equals for auto sum. I click on April just here and I select H and I. When I'm finished, I press enter and you can see I've got my profit for April just here. I can do the same for May. So I click on May 
alt equals, click on May, H to I. See, I'm selecting the column headers here. Press enter to finish. And I'll do the same for July, sorry, June. That's good. And then we can just go through the same rest for each one of these ones. So July, there we go. Oops. August, September, October. Remember, I'm doing Alt equals each time to bring up that shortcut key for auto sum. This makes it a little faster. December, just three more to go. January. Incidentally, I'm just pressing enter after each time and it moves it down to the next line. So it makes it a little bit easier. And finally, March. Great, brilliant. So now we've got these profits here. So all we need to do is just spend a little time making it little, look a little bit pretty. So what I'm gonna do is highlight the A1 all the way across to E1 and then click on the Home tab here at the top and then click on Merge and Center. And then what I'll do is I'm gonna use this little A with a little arrow um, increase to increase the font size. And then I'm gonna click this neutral color just here. In fact, I'll make the, I should have done it the other way around. That's good. Same with Profit, I'll highlight this here. I'm going to click on Merge and Center, type in the word Profits. I'm gonna hold down Control and Enter to keep the focus on the same cell. And then I click on Neutral just here. Uh, what I also wanna do, let's just have a look at my colorings here. I wanna do the same for all of these ones here. So I'm just gonna highlight Receipt, Expenses, Profit, uh, Category and Total, so Receipts, Expensive, Profit, hold down the control key rather, category across the total, and then client payment down to equipment. And I click on neutral here at the top and it just formats all of that, which looks good. And the last thing I wanna do is, let me just highlight month and profit here. And I'm just gonna choose this accent cell style here and then centrally align it. And then what I want to do is have alternate rows going down. So if I um, colored rows, so um, white and blue and white and blue. So I'm gonna highlight May, I'm gonna click on the drop down list for the paint bucket and choose a light blue color, which is great. And then I'm gonna highlight these two just here. Okay, I'm gonna go Control C to copy. And then I'm gonna highlight the rest of this one just here. And then I'm gonna go Control Alt and V for paste special. So that's Control Alt and V to paste special. And I'm just interested in pasting the formats here and then click on OK. So press escape on the keyboard and you can see I've got alternate rows. I can do the same with this here. So I'm gonna just do the same, but a slightly different way just to show you. Um, obviously the more ways you know, the more options you have. So I'm gonna click on B9. I'm gonna change the color of course to this blue. Highlight this pattern here and then click on Format Painter at the top. You can see Format Painter and then highlight the rest of this down here and let go and you can see you've got these figures here. So the next tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how to add all of these with one big sum if function. You see the sum if function is quite limited in as much as you have to, as you can see here, we had to create these separate subtotals on each page to be able to bring them all together for the summary here. But say you didn't want to do that. Say you wanted information maybe on this last page here as to um, maybe the description, you know, or maybe the quarter, or maybe some other bit of information, but you, won't, you don't want to include that on every page. We're gonna do that next time. So make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure that you hit on the notification button so you don't miss uh, the next tutorial that will come out. If you've got anything out of this, then please really appreciate just clicking on the like button, really would appreciate that. I'd also appreciate your comments below. So if this you found helpful as a beginner, brilliant. If you've got any extra tips that you think that I've missed out or some suggestions, then please feel free to add them 
uh, below. Of course, if you're, if you're on Facebook and if you're on Instagram or Twitter, then reach out to us there. If you like what you see here and you feel that you want to book an Excel training course from Computer Tutoring for you or people within your department or within your organization, then please contact us at our website, computertutoring.co.uk. Great. So see you next time.